All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another community call. And today we have three items on the agenda. Uh, first, talk about the Power User Program, the feedback, how it has been working for you so far. Then we'll talk about the editor program that's coming up soon. And I know the details are, there are some details that we will reveal soon. They are not, haven't been worked out in details, but I'm excited to hear what you guys think about you know, how it's gonna change everything. Uh, you're gonna have a conversation on the UX in general, you know, what, thi what things in interface you would like to see different, what things you like the most, the list, et cetera. And maybe we will talk about the potential new roles on the research app, like what kind of other user types with extended privileges and obligations uh, uh, you would like to see in the future. All right. So first of all, let's start with the power user program. And uh, the overwhelming majority of the people present are power users. So what do you think? I think it's great so far because it definitely motivated me to leave more comments. Uh, but like I, like I said previously, because my joint hubs are not the most active hubs on, on Research Hub. Um, and I think from my perception that the uh, medicine and the psychology hubs are perhaps the hottest. So uh, one thing that I s kind of struggle is that I can see there are 16,000 or over 10,000 at least um, papers uploaded on under the business hub, um, but not many comments, only 22 when I joined, around 20. So what I struggle is that I want to upload papers more that I could, you know, participate in the discussion. Mm -hmm. But the route is kind of uh, every day you need to follow others comment previous comments and ask questions or discuss based on that comment even though i'm quite happy to upload more papers and start a discussion myself but perhaps you know um that rule itself um is a little bit tricky for the less um you know active hubs because they will need to constantly find other people's comments and then to try the way to fit in the discussion um that's my perception do you think do you think it could be helped with the discoverability of comments or is it just the nature of you know because we don't have many users it's very tricky at this early stage because if you see something you're particularly interested and other people has you know for example um the previous users uploaded this paper and then you found that but there is no comment under there you are of course quite happy to comment but what if no one follows and you know it doesn't count towards the reward Right. You know, which is the quite selfish to talk about, but for practical reasons, it does not motivate much um, at this stage because you, you don't know if others will be interested to join your discussion, and then you know you won't get the rewards. Yes, so I need to constantly find uh, more relevant topics that I can join, which is why I'm uploading more papers <laughs> and starting more it. comments. Yeah. Yeah, it, it is a peculiar situation. And the, in our previous iteration of the Power User Program, we had more solitaire tasks that you could do by yourself alone, right? You could upload papers, you could discuss, you can you can populate other people's papers with uh, comments. But uh, we had this problem where, to be to be fair, the I think the burnout rate was pretty high, and uh, the the interaction itself on the research hub might not be as meaningful as people would want, right? Because you don't talk to other live people. And so we tried to do the second iteration where we did kind of force users in a more awkward uh, activity, right? Where they have to find, seek out comments themselves and create discussions. But the hope is that at least throughout these discussions, you will, you know, meet other users, you know, pick up some friends, acquaintances on uh, research hub, and you will feel you know, more intrinsically motivated to come back and spend time on it. Uh, Scott, to answer your question, better or worse, I, I am happy with the rates of the interactions between users recently. The last week has been a, you know, a pleasure to moderate and see. Uh, the problems themselves, it, it, perhaps it's better to ask the users themselves, right? I mean, obviously, like Shing said, the more, the less populated hubs are problematic, right? To, to fulfill your daily tasks because you have no one to interact with. 
for your discussion and question uh, tasks. What do you all feel is the hardest part, I guess? And also, when I'm trying to introduce to my close colleagues um, that to get them on Research Hub and uh, talk, tell them about this program, um, like I said last meeting, uh, one thing that I need to explain is what is this research coin token? And um, they would perhaps ask me, so why why should they comment? Because first of all, if it's for you know uh, their intrinsic motivation to discuss this research with other colleagues, mm -hmm. the, the thing is there aren't many discussions and you know you need to be very enthusiastic and passionate to start the journey as you know early contributors which is why you are giving them these rewards but second you need to explain why do they need these rewards and how can they use them as you know the fear money that they are more familiar with etc and mm -hmm. yeah and it, it's it's quite turbulent <laughs> um yeah so that's another thing that <clears throat> i find it hard to um, introduce Research Hub, um, this program, Power User Program, to my colleagues is the ac economic reward. Uh, how right. to explain that? Yes. Yeah, th that issue is twofold, right, Thomas? First of all, the extent at which we can discuss the utility of the token is, you know, sometimes under question for legality concerns. And uh, secondly, uh, we don't have a good system you know a good uh elegant message that we could share with other users right that would explain the research coin nature we have been working on this one pager have you had any uh success showing it to other users yes um i i have convinced one one of um, a few um to at least try on research hub um but the, the thing is you need to really believe in in the in the things that we are doing on the community in the community to continue in the long run i think um, because as early contributors sometimes you are kind of feeling in the um in the cha echo chamber <laughs> because if you're in a less active active um, hub and the comments you are living on the site i'm not getting response um, mm -hmm. in the long run i think that's not very realistic for the less passionate contributors to you know persist on this journey yeah you're right we need to get a critical mass of users so they start talking with each yes. other organically i think early contributors are really really important if they stick around or not <clears throat> if there are not enough early contributors we are likely to you know cool down i think on the discussions Lee, what do you think so far? What was your experience like? So everything Xing was saying uh, is, I think, echoes what I'm feeling about it. Uh, but with the latest power user program, it seems like one way to open up um, opportunities to use things like hashtag comment or hashtag discuss um, is this very useful initial comment that comes with hashtag interesting, right? So now that this is sort of in place, uh, you can look over these papers that are being uploaded and have that initial comment. Um, and that's sort of like a cue, like, oh, okay, here's a place where I can start some discussion. Um, and that I find is helpful. Um, and I find myself commenting on a lot of those papers that have that initial comment there already for me to begin engaging with. And a lot of the times too, this um, the, that first hashtag interesting comment is very open ended, almost like a, yes. a the person's take on what the article is, uh, and that leaves it open for someone who else to come in and provide a comment or discuss something, and then you start you know various threads. So yes. that feels useful. You're muted. <clears throat> I think he's talking to someone else. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah. Exactly. So, do do you think, Lee, that the interesting comment would you say it's it's a good indicator that this particular paper is more worthy of discussion than papers that have no comments currently? 
Um, it just provides, like, uh, you know, I, I can make initial comments on papers, but that first comment, when the author uploads a paper, or excuse me, when the person uploads a paper and then makes that first hashtag interesting comment is almost inviting, right? Because it tells yeah. me that this person didn't just upload a paper to see, like, what happens. They uploaded a paper and then started almost a discussion being like, hey, here's what I take away from this, and then leaves the door open for anyone else to come in and offer their thoughts and continue the discussion. So it seems twofold in its usefulness. One, it invites people a little bit more to, uh, in, you know, to say what they think and begin a discussion, ask questions. But it also um, provides a sense of um, uh, legitimacy, I don't know what to say, with this uploaded paper in, in, in the sense that this person uploaded this paper and is actually interested in potentially discussing it. Um, and it, it just that alone, too, almost feels like the door is open for someone to come in and start a discussion. Scott, do you mean the author of the paper itself? No, I keep saying author, but I mean the person who uploaded the paper. <laughs> That's my fault. Well, it can be both, right? So the you do have the tag that the author, if the author uploads the paper, they are visible as a you know the, the person who is one of the authors of the paper. Uh, sure. So if they do post the interesting comment, that perhaps has a double the power of a regular comment. Absolutely, yeah. And that's one of the things that perhaps we want to highlight in the future, Thomas, if, if I recall some of the conversations correctly, where maybe we have the offers of the paper kind of open to the public for a Q&A type of thing. Yeah, for sure. All right, so, so we have other things to discuss, so maybe we should move on. We can return to this if we have more time left. So the editor program. Uh, any hopes, any fears of how it's going to go? If I'm being very honest, actually, after reading the introduction, I'm very, very excited and I applied, as you can see. Um, but to be honest, I am still not very um, clear about this role. So I, in my understanding, there are certain responsibilities, uh, weekly responsibilities that we need to do, like being an ambassador to introduce um, research hub to the academia, colleagues or scholars, and also to uh, moderate um, and also to engage um, the discussion within the hub and uploading more um, papers. Um, yeah, but I think perhaps a, a more detailed um, responsibility explanation around those could be more helpful because um, I think I'm just trying to picturing the um, pic picturing the role myself um, and there are some details that I think it's missing um, but I, I, I can't think of anything particular now but maybe I will follow up on others discussion once I remember those yeah, I was thinking about the other day and I couldn't think about the details. Um, perhaps others could contribute and I will follow up later. Mm -hmm. So to answer Scott's question, the, the editor program is coming up soon uh, from what I'm hearing, maybe this week or next week. Thomas, do you have any more concrete dates? Yeah, we are trying to get it uh, like the first version out this week. Okay. So... Um, to end, uh, basically, it is vague on purpose, so to say, right? So there are responsibilities, but uh, given that it's currently there is no mechanism in place to like, manually supervise what the editors are going to do, right? So this is a more less curated role, so to say, right? So it's more built on trust and uh, the responsibilities that you will have there are basically not, you know, set, set in stone. There are no milestones that you uh, are supposed to fill. There are there are desired activities, right, that you should be engaging in. So that would lead to your uh, hub to grow organically. And I think in some iterations, and we might actually go back to the situations eventually if we figure out a good way to do it. So we would be to incentivize uh, editors mm -hmm. to grow their hub by making the income somehow dependent on the number of active users, for example, in a hub, right? But there is no, there is no straightforward formula for that. Uh, 
at the at, at the moment. If you do have any suggestions, I'm open to hearing them. Absolutely, uh, Scott. To answer your question, there we Patrick and me will go through the through the submissions, through the applications, through probably through this week, and we will have a meeting with the people who basically who qualify. And that's pretty much it. And, sorry, am I right in understanding that there will be a, ba a bottom line of all the responsibilities that's clearly listed on the Notion page? And above that is um, will be the editor's initiatives, or it depends on how actively they want to perform in these hubs. Because there will be no strict requirements around anything above that bottom line of you know um curating moderating etc that that for example how many users you can bring at this stage right. is your discretion and your pay will not change um exactly. which is not very incentivizing exactly, to be honest yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. but yeah that can change and because this is only the first step of this program so that makes sense um yeah like like you said maybe the growth of the hub um, could be something to measure, right. but it's definitely yeah. not on the user amount, I think, because, you know, like I said, yeah. the subject matters are very different. Yeah, right now, right now, no. So that that's, that's an interesting. So the initial goal of this program is to see is how little supervision in, you know, in an advanced adult community like ours, <laughs> we can get away, right? So like the... <laughs> Possibly, we don't know what's going to happen. We have high hopes for the okay. for the morale and the goals of the editors, but we don't know. Best case scenario, everyone is just doing best they can. There is no need for any interventions. Organic growth achieved naturally. Uh, worst case scenario, right? We'll have to come up with uh, you know more concrete uh, goals or figure out incentives that are. Uh, dependent, like you said, on the number of users you brought in and stuff like that. But we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Let's let's try to start with the hands-off type of management and see where it leads us. Yeah, that makes sense. And also, um, because we will have the right to distribute rewards to the active users in our hubs, uh, for example. So it might be too detailed at this moment to ask, but do you have any rough idea of you know like mm -hmm. will we re receive monthly allowance or you know this allowance will be rolled up and then etc so uh, like i said those details um, i haven't figured mm -hmm. out how to do those and where that discretion of a, you know uh, where that power <laughs> could go because once you have the the coins the governance tokens yeah there, there should be some boundaries around this right. power i think uh thomas do you know any exact details on the quantities of the allowance or how it's going to be implemented are they going to be deposited directly in the editor's account um i don't know the details about these specific amounts but mm -hmm. yeah uh from the meetings i've been in i don't think we're building in like anything for the allowance. So I guess I would assume it's similar to like what we're doing with you, okay. uh, like giving you sort of, yeah, just like in your, in your account and tr trusting that you won't run away with it, basically. Okay, that, well, like I said, the first stage of the editor program is extremely, you know, build yeah. and trust. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and the pay will be in RSC, coins um each month three thousand yeah. dollars equivalent equivalent right? yeah the equivalent that's right sorry 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 to sound very <laughs> skeptical no. at this moment because the um the token value is flu quite fluctuant right um it's, yeah it's right now it's not very stable yeah. yeah it's changing on a daily basis so that's another thing why we need very passionate early contributors um yeah because it could be only half the next day to be very honest um right. yes yeah, so, so, so what would be the best way to handle it perhaps it would be better to send it over the course of the month or like you know so so it's not that you, on a salary day the the valuation drops in half 
<laughs> right the next day it goes up twice it's a good question on uh, because actually it's actually more affected because um I was asking an account in this because it actually affects like income tax purposes. Like how you declare if you're getting paid in crypto on your taxes, right? When you're collecting income. Uh, and from what I understand, the accountant told me that it's like, uh, it's kind of like when you're claiming your taxes, it's whatever the amount is like that period. Um, mm -hmm. you're, you're claiming them. And then yeah, that has to be looked at as like, as an investment too. So you can collect. Well, like I'm in Canada. I don't know how it is in the rest of the world. As in Canada, like with capital gains tax or capital losses, um, those have to be also like kept track of in case like that occurs, right, with the income. Mm -hmm. um, but for us in Canada, like let's say you get paid in RSC and then you sell that day, it, then it, that's easy. But let's mm -hmm. say you held on to the RSC. And you kept holding on to it past your tax your tax return then then the, the, there's like capital gains and losses you have to consider so it does get a little bit complicated it might mm -hmm. need yeah i don't again i'm in canada so like whatever i was talking about it could be completely different in the uk usa etc right so you know obviously as, as a researcher we can't guarantee that you will you know sell this the same day right so you might wait a week and it might double, might exactly. you know, decrease in half. <laughs> exactly. I would say just like one, like it's like pick a day in the month, it gets paid or grows, whatever that market rate is. And then <laughs> oh, that, yeah, that's, it, you can that's your future you power whatever. in the hub. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then just to confirm to you, what blockchain is the RSC developed on? Is it like Ethereum? Mm -hmm. Ethereum, yeah. Okay, okay. ER20, I think. Yeah. ERC20. Cool. ERC and also another sorry another question on this is um as i said some of the hubs aren't, aren't very active and some of them are quite you know like a few are really really active compared to others um so i don't know about the applications you guys have received on your end but what if you don't get editors in some hubs or perhaps for example if i could easily ma manage two hubs related like business and finance for example mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, we we have talk, we have talked about the opposite situation, and I think we are okay with having multiple editors in the same hub. But uh, you know, nothing we can do about people not applying to a particular hub. I mean, obviously, we can try to you know do some outreach and find for uh, specific uh, individuals to govern those hubs. As for the same person governing more than one hub, I am not entirely sure at the moment. And like, obviously, would it come with a double pay? All these details that that we would need to discuss. <laughs> Individual case, yes. Yeah, uh, Thomas, I don't know if you have any insight into that. I don't think we discussed that, perhaps. Yeah, that's, that's definitely a good question to think about. And yeah, I don't think we've discussed it. In detail. Mm -hmm. uh, my guess, yeah, you know, individual cases probably are possible, but also uh, I can't, get, you know, can't promise anything. Not publicly. <laughs> Not publicly, yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, any more questions, suggestions, discussions about the editor program, or should we move on, move on to the UX? All right, let's move on. All right, so Joey. Uh, thankfully, shared with us some notes uh, he took on his experience. We, you know, working with the research hub interface through the submission process and everything. Why don't we start with the same formula? With what do you think are the strongest and weak, weakest points so far in the UX research hub? I think that one is on Joey, right? Do you want me to start? Do you want me to start? No, um, Scott, Scott what, would be, what would be the strongest and weakest points of the Research Hub UX? I think the weakest for me is that on my homepage, the Again, I'm speaking from a less um, active hub perspective. So um, like most of the articles, I do not understand the titles. So I need to make efforts in searching the keywords that I'm 
particularly interested in. But like I said, um, I don't know if it's because I don't, I'm not very tech savvy. So I don't know when you built it, like I said, in the community, um, what about the keyword search function that side? So uh, I, I had to make quite a lot of effort in searching those because um, the keywords that I type in, you know, didn't get lots of results coming out. Perhaps it's also because of, you know, less popular topic. Um, yeah, I think it's quite um, a lot of different subject areas popping up on my um, homepage. And from my experience, the thing I did when I entered was just to go search in my own hub because I couldn't understand the titles of like medicine or biology, mm -hmm. etc. So it's it's a... very chaotic, even though it's neatly designed, but like right. the papers popping up to me, like I think there's no algorithm <laughs> recommendation I can see mm -hmm. um, to me. For example, if if you did like the algorithms behind, perhaps what I will see when I join will more based on like blockchain, finance, business, and perhaps sociology, um, those big hubs, or at least the hubs that I joined. Um, but right now it's like all the things just immediately pop up. Um, okay, so I have a counter question to you. So you mentioned the keywords. Do you think if you introduce a specific category of keyword that would help? Uh, <clears throat> maybe you guys could contribute from the tech behind that because what I'm familiar with is when I um, su submit my paper and get accepted at a journal, um, they will provide those keywords next to the abstract and from my experience in searching and that's very very helpful and when i'm doing intensive um literature review as you guys know some of the abstracts in include a lot of jargons and they are not the least like easiest to read at a glance um so and, and the titles sometimes just you know it it has a question mark, etc. It's it's not very um, information. So I would perhaps first thing is to look at the keywords and to narrow down my search, um, and then perhaps you know skip um, on the abstract bit to see if this is the literature that I want to connect, collect, or if I want to make some effort to read, <laughs> continue to read. Okay. So the keywords would help, but you also said the 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 titles and the abstract sometimes are inaccessible uh, would it be sorry would... sorry i'm um, not inaccessible i mean academics write their abstracts in a very like, complex way yeah. it's not yeah, your sem problem. semantically inaccessible yeah I, I understand i understand yeah so would it be better if uh, we would somehow cultivate the culture where people editorialize or digest the content, like the more editorialized titles, right? So like, you know, if, if one of the users is expert in the field, they can come up with a more accessible title. And maybe with a, we had the key takeaways before. Mm -hmm. uh, so maybe if someone could made key, make the key takeaways that are accessible to the general public out of the inaccessible abstract would that help yeah I, I can see when i upload paper you recommend that we rewrite the abstract right. or the key points in a way that everyone could understand but to be honest that's quite a lot of effort for each paper that we yeah. upload so it definitely you know needs some motivation behind that um yeah i definitely think that's a very good point but perhaps not for not like a ritual kind of thing when you upload a paper. It's not very realistic for um, the uploaders to rewrite every paper they upload. Perhaps something we could mm -hmm. consider is uh, like a program thing. Uh, for example, there's I don't know if you guys know about the media called the Conversation. Um, it's quite popular in UK academia and also some other countries, but from my pers perspective it's mostly um uk or like australia and canada um, scholars so their mission is basically to invite academia to write um, media articles but you know uh, that is endorsed by the ac academia experts so, so one format of the the conversation article is to um you know rewrite a research finding from papers or one paper um, in 600 words that everyone could read. 
So maybe that could be like a program thing to encourage and then get the rewards. Um, or, you know, the editor could invite some someone who's interested in sharing their research or certain research findings in that short couple of hundred words format. I think your point on the key takeaways um, beneath each paper is also very interesting. Yeah, but that definitely uh, requires some effort. I mean, that might that might actually be a transition into our last item of the agenda if, uh, if you want to about different roles on research hub we might have a specific person whose only goal would be to go around and change revise the uh, titles into more accessible editorialized titles and add uh, key takeaways if, if we decided that's important right perhaps something like um, a curator um, to have a section weekly or monthly um like digest kind of thing to write a few articles on different topic areas and um yeah to create those perhaps this this is an interesting reading um like five reasons why you shouldn't blah blah <laughs> that kind of thing um but it's an, you know it's based on solid research it's it's not just you know media articles yeah. Right. No, no, those would need to be trained people. Yes. If I can say, uh, I can touch on some of your, your points. So yeah, you're right. Right now we don't have like an algorithmic feed that like recommends you stuff uh, based on what you've been viewing. The closest thing that we, the closest thing to that is sort of like the my hubs section on the homepage. If, you're, if you know what that is, it's on like the sidebar Yeah. that, that basically just like filters down papers to only the ones that uh par that are part of the hubs that you've joined so far okay. and uh we sort it by default by trending which is sort of like a an algorithm that kind of like takes into account how recent to go the paper was uploaded and the activity on the paper so like upvotes and comments on it play into that and those are ranked and then that's the order that we presented to you pretty much Thomas, do you know if it's if it's going to be a problem at all to extract the keywords from when when the paper is uh, exported into Research Hub? Yeah, so um, I had a question about that. Like, when you say keywords, what keywords? If you can give like a few examples, are you like trying to search for? Yes, I gave uh, one paper's example in the hub. Let me see. For example, this one. Um, this one basically talks about the uh, robotiz robotization and the gender pay gap in Europe. So the keywords will be industrial robots, and that's the first one, and gen gender pay gap, the second one. Third one will be Europe, and the fourth one will be autom automation. Yeah. Um, so perhaps this is an, a very good example because the topic is, is quite um, second and you know, tells you basically what they are talking about. Um, but sometimes the title is just um, irrelevant. It's a, like a question mark, etc. And then you need to read the whole abstract to get what they are talking about. Um, in that case, a, a quick glance at the keyword section could be very helpful for you to just quickly do your literature review or you know, to find the papers that you want to comment. See. Strangest thing, not necessary. Okay, um, Scott, yeah. why do you think that is? It's not very helpful, you think? We've considered something similar. It's kind of like tags. Yeah, tags. You're, you're familiar with like Reddit, maybe they have like tags for different. Yes. Within like within the subreddit, yeah, each post can be tagged with a couple of yes, different things. Yes, tags. They're basically ha uh, they're basically tags, yeah, Thomas. So if if we if we col collaborate with OSF, for example, and when they when you submit the pre-registration or preprint uh, for OSF, it asks you to enter the keyword. So for example, in psychology, because there are so many different types of psychological research, if you see a tag that it's vision and attention, you already know that people are going to study something about you know how people stare at stuff and track stuff with their eyes yeah and not and not like the clinical psychology right so that narrows things down really fast right yeah perhaps we could have like an optional section where the uploader can put in five tags or four tags mm -hmm. 
or, or or don't you know it's up to them yeah and the visitors of that um, paper page could quickly look at what they are talking about mm -hmm. maybe yeah yeah, yeah we, we did think uh, about tags a lot and i i think like we were, we were really on the fence uh like deciding to add them or not i think we just ended up not doing it because there were some other things that have, were more that were higher priority and we felt it might like add a bit too much complexity the ui yeah it's like but yeah i definitely feel that like we will probably need to have like some additional way to sort and filter information from within a hub because right now that's once you're in a hub that's as far as uh the filtering kind of goes right now yeah and then the bright side though with the creation of the editor program because we probably going to have so many users that are within the same field right even now i'm looking at the application there are a lot of psychologists but they're all different right so we might have the opportunity to split hubs right into smaller ones into like health psychology social psychology cognitive psychology uh, etc and thomas you said that eventually the, not i think i don't think you said but someone said that eventually the plan is to have hubs nested within each other right so like all the fields within psychology would be sub hubs within psychology etc yeah that's that was another sort of option like considered alongside tags like maybe instead of tags we just do nesting or instead of nesting we do tags so yeah all is similar in the same vein of ideas yeah okay all right any more thoughts on the ux or new roles that would be handy to have on research hub the curate i like the idea of curator thank you i think um, uh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. um i think it it's 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 a thing now uh, because i follow DAOs quite a lot and curators in a DAO um, are quite important and especially in web3 because you know um people joining web3 need to quickly learn a lot of things and for a DAO, if there will be a curator who can communicate the things that new newcomers do not get, or you know, could be more interested in, and that that could be the bridge to invite more um, mm -hmm. users to the community. That does overlap a little bit with the editor, right? So perhaps in ideal world i don't know if it's an ideal world but perhaps eventually a more full-time editors could fulfill the curator role maybe or separate what do you think yes i think so i think it could be part of the um, editorial role and it could also be you know at first like a programmer thing like i like i said and then you can pick up the, the best ones um or we do a vote or something, and then they get a lot of <laughs> research coins, like a competition thing or, um, because I, I follow something um, like the layer three on, on Twitter. So they are basically, um, they are basically collaborating with different DAOs and hosting, um, you know, events to invite more users to use those DAOs. For example, I think they invited was it super rare or something? And then, um, you know, if you write an article about our DAO or, you know, about DeFi, and then you, you could get the chance to win those tokens from us, something like that. Or, or like, a, yeah. Or we can have people who's more experienced and who has more background knowledge in those subjects. Lee, you were saying? I was just going to make a quick comment on what was written on the UX uh, Google Doc about uploading a paper. I had also uploaded some papers for the first time recently. And um, believe it or not, I could not find the large blue button that said new post with a plus sign. Um, I was looking everywhere on the left hand side and then I went to help and I clicked through that and it actually took me a little bit of time. And I imagine, you know, there's going to be people who can't spot the obvious thing. I was wondering if it would be possible, like in the help tab, just to have like a very succinct FAQ for the most obvious topics. 
um, because I imagine people will click there first. And if, you know, I went there and it said, actually, there's a big blue button on the top right hand side of the screen, I'll be like, oh, of course, how did I miss that? Just mm -hmm. to sort of streamline um, accessibility, uh, because, you know, and especially in terms of new users who are coming in and want to get involved, um, you don't want to discourage them or f make them feel like oh, it's not really worth it. I'll go do something else. Um, if they just, you know, click one more link and see like, oh, OK, this is how I do this or this is how I make a comment or something like that. Some some quick redundancy um, to explain even the most mm -hmm. obvious topic topics, because I don't think anything is not obvious. Uh, the UX is great. Um, but for weirdos like me who miss, you know, giant obvious things on how to do something for the first time, that might be helpful just if they happen to click on the help tab for that explanation. No, we, yeah, I agree with you. We had instances in the past, I think the Eleanor, right? Uh, Patrick said in the past and a few other users. Yeah, it's not, it's not super obvious. Perhaps it wasn't Eleanor. It was someone. Yeah, it's not super obvious. Not sure. Thomas, what, what do you think? Thomas, have you, are there any talks about changing the UX of the new post? Um, yeah, a, a lot actually. Oh, really? Do you mind yeah. giving us a, like a few of the snippets? Um, sure. We, we <laughs> were just like going through, um, we hired like a, a really expensive designer like pretty recently okay. like they started last week so she's sort of redesigning a bunch of pages right now oh and uh okay. yeah just to make sure the ux is like super intuitive and yeah and like obvious so i i think like she she like doesn't like the new post thing she she wants to just call it like submit paper or something mm -hmm. and then like have the other post types um created somewhere like um somewhere else in the UI, something like that. Makes so sense. yeah, we are definitely working on the UX right now. Okay, excellent, excellent. All right, uh, so I have a question. So have moderator. So the moderator is actually not moderator, right? Because there will be moderators besides uh, editors. That's it. A little bit of a problem. So, how about the brainstorm? Maybe a different, a different title for the editor program. You, it's possible that we are actually pretty set on the title, but I'm not sure. How. Um, you might, might change. I can give some context. I think like we went with it because like our our CEO just like really likes that term. I guess he, he said like okay. a bunch. Like, he wants to call the the moderators like rename it to editors. So. All right, so so it's a purposeful choice. I don't think we have degrees of freedom in that part. Mm. Uh, I mean, I, I think we we it's not like we we can't change it if the community like all really feels strongly right. about. It, I think like you would be open to changing it, but yeah, yeah, it it it, it is a loaded term for sure, and uh, it, it overlaps with the editors and the journals that have a different set of responsibilities. Let's see, let's see yeah, if it... his concern, I think, was uh, just to like, I think he called it like sprawl. It's like a bunch of ideas and concepts that are kind of close, but not exactly the same. And he wanted to unify it. So there were like less concepts to have to worry about. Okay, that makes sense. All Scott right. brings up a good point that editor does sound appealing to people. Mm, okay, so it's more desired. As a position, better to put it in your CV. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I think that that was part of it as well, for sure. Okay. Uh, I I do have. If we are out of topics for discussion, unless anyone wants to bring up any of the things we have discussed, I do have kind of an idea, but I don't know how realistic it would be. What do you all think about? Uh, a quick collaboration between the editor program and the power user program in form of the editors supervising the power users in their hub. Good idea, bad idea? Why not? Hmm? Why not? I, I don't see why we can't do that, sorry. 
Well, that would it's, be adding to the response. Yeah, it's basically just taking a, a moderating role to the, you know, uh, from you to the um, editors. And, yeah. So, Scott, that would entail something like, so we would come up with, you know, let's say a set of tasks would change. The, ed the editor's job would be to reach out to all the, uh, all the, Power users, they supervise, they would, you know, explain the new set of rules, they would discuss the best strategy, what to post, and they would oversee, basically, the allowance feature would be part of it, right, because they would, they would award the current power user actions, perhaps. I thought that was already, you know, required from the editors to do that, like a moderator, and to give the rewards. So okay. I, I don't think it's a problem. It, it's very reasonable. Yeah. Okay, so so you so you think Scott that the editors would want wouldn't want to have more responsibilities like that? Okay. But what about they they are supposed to well as it's written, they are supposed to oversee the community anyway, right? And they, they spark the conversation. They <laughs> They must has, hate that as well, right? Hopefully not. My understanding was that that's, that should be part of your job responsibility and adding the power user program is just a different format in the moderation because you gotcha. are gonna give rewards to comments anyway. Is that right? It, it's true yeah it's true i mean it does uh, look like it's very aligned in that sense um if there is any concern about rapid expansion um at any point it seems like this would be a safe bet because i don't know who is moderating the power users or giving them the rewards is it just you anton or are there several other people yeah, right, right now it's me and that's why I'm asking because the power user program is growing and it's becoming you know harder and harder for me to keep track of all the users. So it would be like if, if we could delegate all of the users across multiple editors, I don't think any one editor would have more than five power users or perhaps even less. Well, well yeah. What about a team of moderators under you, Anton? Well, that would now... be <laughs> budget. <laughs> no, that would be that would so think, think about it this way, right, Scott? We could create a dedicated new team, right? So specifically for that task, or we could incorporate it into the responsibilities of the program for people who already do something similar to it. Do we need a dedicated team of moderators? Like because it, like if we decide against it, then yes, that would be the solution. Four to five people under a moderator who's um, four to five power users under a moderator doesn't seem like a lot, and it doesn't seem like a lot of work. I think the only concern would be how clean the um, UX is, you know, and if there's going to be notifications that one of your power users mm -hmm. made a post or made a comment or something like that, and you can click it and see what they right. did to assess and reward efficiently, that would be the only concern. Yeah, that that currently is an area for improvement. <laughs> how about this? We delegate it to the editors for now. And if the power user grow, a program grows too big to fit in a full-time role, then we can employ someone to just focus on the moderation. Does that sound good? Because at the moment, I don't think, I, because I don't know about the real data, perhaps not many um, yeah. power users. So, you know, splitting into different hubs gives perhaps one editor, two or three users. And I think that's fine. I, I'm not speaking for others, um, but I think that's fine at this moment. And if let's just reach like, reach a target. If it reach a target, um, like over, like Lisa, 45 and then, or even lower than that, then we just hire someone to do this full time. Okay. So we would need to figure out the number of power users that would be comfortable for editors to keep track of, given that the power users, there is no power users can fluctuate, right? So some people can post something once a week, other people post 
things twice a day. So hard to predict the amount of workload. All right. Um, any closing, concluding remarks? All right. Well, then, thank you all for coming. Then that was a productive community call. And I will see you all next week. Thank you. Bye. Yeah. See you later. See you, everyone. Bye, everyone.